Okay, um, so I am choosing to go over the 55 year old construction worker with low back pain. Um, we think that he has a poor hip hinge, which means that he bends at his back instead of bending at his hips or squatting and possibly a bulging disc. And so I wanna take the perspective of a PT first. Um, I would bring him in and I would check his lower extremity sensation. Um, a lot of the times with bulging discs, um, you will see that turn into herniated disc and affect the sciatic nerve, which runs down both legs. Um, and with damage of the sciatic nerve, that can bring loss of sensation, um, loss of strength. Um, it can lead to drop foot, which means that um, the impulses are not sending, they aren't able to send it down the leg because the sciatic nerve has been damaged. And so therefore your body doesn't tell its foot to pick it up when you're walking. Just different things like that. So first I would bring him in and check uh, lower extremity sensation, lower extremity strength. I would check strength of um, hamstrings, strength of quads, strength of hip flexors, um, glute muscles, everything like that. I mean, just kind of see where he's at because a lot of those, with a lot of those things, you can tell um, what they need to work on. Um, but I would set um, his rehab goals. First of all, we want to see decreased pain and symptoms. Obviously, that's going to be anybody's number one goal with going into any type of PT. It's actually funny because I'm actually seeing a PT right now for my herniated disc. Um, so I know a lot about um, this topic. So I think that it kind of helps. Like I'm able to put myself in the situation and see what works best for me personally. It's going to be different for everybody else, but there's kind of like a generalized a treatment plan that you can do for people who have either a bulging or herniated disc. Um, if it's just bulging, which it says that it could potentially be a bulging disc, not herniated, then we can go ahead and jump right to core. With herniated, you may have to treat the leg pain and numbness first. Um, but since his is just um, kind of starting back pain, it's not going down the leg, then we can really focus on the core and just the bulging disc. Um, first, I would start with a lot of pelvic floor and deep, deep core exercises. Um, therefore, we can help tilt the back from flexion or overextension to a normal good posture. Um, flexion does affect um, the bulging disc the most. And I think that's why we see the law in construction workers, um, anybody that's like bending over and having to pick things up because the flexion uh, presses on that disc and then the jelly-like fluid is therefore pushed out of the disc and that what bulges it and then eventually herniates it. Um, so strength and core is was the second goal besides decreased pain symptoms. So for the uh, strength of core, I would warm up with pelvic floor tilts. Um, that looks like pressing your pelvic floor against, against the ground. You're gonna be laying down in kind of like a bridge position and you're gonna be pressing your spine against the floor to where it's flat on the ground. Therefore, you're activating your core, you're warming it up. Um, and those pelvic floor muscles are the muscles that help you sit up straight and have good posture. And when you bend over, you don't bend over at your hips, but you rather bend over and you keep that good straight posture. Um, so I would do warm up with pelvic floor tilts, um, planks with a water bottle in between your scaps. Um, and that helps you keep a flat back. Um, again, that activates your core, activates your pelvic muscles. Um, helps you have good posture and really get your deep core activated. Um, I would do dead bugs. Again, making sure that your spine is flat on the floor like our pelvic tilts and holding a ball, uh, physio ball and doing opposite arm, opposite leg um, to again help uh, with that deep core and to challenge them if that is too easy for them, then I would have a ruler underneath their back and if it slips at all while they're doing their dead bugs, then that means that they are not activating their core enough and pressing it against the floor, which is what we initially want. Um, moving on to my third goal, which is loosen hamstrings, 
quads, hips, glute muscles, all of that jazz. Um, we really need to have loose lower extremities when dealing with a bulging disc or a herniated disc because those muscles are gonna help us squat correctly instead of bending over. Because when we bend over, that means that our muscles are weak um, and can't support us squatting. So stretching with a band, um, doing the so right to loosen your hips, your hip flexors, um, stretching with lunges, um, that will also help your hip flexors. I found that dry needling your glutes um, can help with a lot of the pain, especially if it's starting to get into your um, upper butt cheek or into your leg. Dry needling glutes, dry needling all those muscles, specifically the glute med, will help tremendously with that. Um, and so, yeah, I think those are my would be my goals for PT and exercises that I would do. Now, from the perspective of a strength coach, um, absolutely no axial loading. Absolutely not. Um, or flexion of the back at all. Uh, or weight above the head. Anything where it's going to create the back to overextend, over, especially over flex, or it's putting weight on the disc and therefore it's compressing the disc. We don't want any of that. So um, from a strength coach perspective, when you're dealing with a bulging or herniated disc, you kind of have to get creative. Um, and so I wouldn't have them doing a ton of lifting, lifting as a strength coach. I would really work on, um, you know, what I talked about, hamstrings, quads, um, core, stuff like that. So some examples are leg press and making sure that our back is flat on the leg press machine and we're, we are doing the leg press. If we raise our legs up, we have three levels. Raise our legs up, we're getting completely hamstrings. We have a neutral squat, we're in the middle. And then when we, have low, we lower our legs on the board, we're getting our quads. So I would do a three level um, leg press. Therefore, we're able to strengthen our lower extremities, but we are also not having to do the axial loading, which is really, really, really bad for the back. Um, I would do band pull-offs, which is you tie a band into this, um, the side of the rack and you hold the band out, and we actually see these a lot in PT as well. Um, and you pull it out, and you're holding it, and you walk sideways laterally, and it's working on strengthening your um, obliques, um, and also your core with those lateral movements and holding and having to keep um, your center of gravity, um, good posture, neutral position, and you're having to keep that as you're walking and the band is pulling, pulling, pulling you this way, but you're having to stay neutral and really strengthen the core. Uh, do that both ways. Um, that Those would be three of the exercises that I would do as a strength coach. Um, finally, just some warm-ups that I would do to try to like prevent this would obviously be stretching. Stretching is very, very, very important. Um, drinking lots of water too. I would stretch hamstrings um hip flexors quads and i prefer the band i think stretching with a band um is really effective um so when you come in for work do 15 minutes of stretching a day and that will make a big difference and that will help um fire up your lower extremities to help you squat um and to help you not bend over and also um doing body weight squats too as well with your chest up and no flexion of the back uh, will help fire up the legs or squatting. And also I would like for them to do pelvic tilts um, just to get the core activated and strengthen it and work on, um, work on using their core throughout their work duties in the day and not, if there's something on the ground, not bending over and flexing the back, but instead using their legs and their core that we activated at the beginning of the day and squatting and picking it up and keeping that head up so therefore, we're not flexing the back and pressing on that disc more than it already is. Um, again, just a lot of it really just transfers. Um, if we look at what ties to a bulging disc, it's just a lot of core, lower extremities. Um, and that can just all be avoided from PT, in the weight room, warm-up exercises. Um, as you can see, that it all ties together. Um, doing things in different environments will help 
Does it just have to be PT? Does it just have to be in the weight room? Does it just have to be warm up? It can be all three, it can be one or the other, um, but it's just really important to make sure that your lower extremities are warmed up, loosened, strengthened, um, and also that your core is activated, your pelvic floor is activated, um, so therefore we can avoid a bulging disc and eventually a herniated disc. So, thank you.